on this episode of Ghost Hunters International. The team travels to Tuscany to dig up the skeletons in a 700-year-old case of murder and seduction. She was bricked up alive and left for dead. Exactly. Have they stirred up the rage of a betrayed spirit? I totally just saw a face. Can you come closer? <laughs> Then, GHI searches for the ghost of a tortured Italian patriot in the prison tower of the Palazzo Ducale. Is it true that you were murdered in this palace? But will the mad violinist next door play the team a different tune? Whoa. So loud. And a lot of your family's from Italy, correct? Yeah, man, a lot of uh, Italian heritage. So uh, it's always nice to be here and kind of look a little more into my roots. I always figured Pisa was like a major city, but it's actually kind of like a small town here. Yeah, it's just kind of like nestled in the middle of the valley here. Yeah. Coming up on our right, Leaning Tower of Pisa. Well, check that one off. We, we hit the Eiffel Tower, Leaning Tower of Pisa. Yeah, that's cool. Then around. All right, everyone, welcome to Fazanova, Italy. Brandy's going to let us know about the case, and it is a pretty large one. Hey, and we're headed to Malaspina Castle. Now, this place was first constructed around the 11th century. There's stories that Dante has visited the castle as well as Mussolini, so this place has a lot of history to it. Now, in terms of activity, we're looking at black shadows, screams coming from a torture room, claims of dresser drawers opening and closing on their own. Wow. This place is really big. We're actually going to be staying there in the different haunted rooms, so we'll be able to investigate all night. It should be a great time. Hopefully, we find something. After 20 minutes of winding road, we made it. Yeah. All right, let's get inside, see what's going on. Let's wait. Let's rock. Pietro? Hi, hello. Rob, how are you? I'm Pietro, I'm fine. Hi, nice Hi. to meet you. Dustin, Hi. nice to meet you. Hi, Bye. Pietro. Well, sir, this is quite a castle. This thing it's is quite huge. a castle, yes, yes. And it's been in your family quite some time, we understand? Yes, it was bought first by Spinetta Malaspina in the 1340s, and since that date, it belongs to my family. Well, if you could show us around, show yes, us where please. the activity has been reported. Okay, All right, thank we'll you. follow you. Okay. Here we are in the largest prison of the castle, and this became famous because the legend says this young lady called Bianca Maria Luisa, she fell in love with this guy that kept the, um, the animals, you know. The father, he could not permit these things, so decided to bury her here in this prison, in this castle. So she was bricked up alive and left for dead. Exactly. When we start to restore this building, we discover some bones and we discover that they belong to Bianca Maria Luisa. That is exactly what the legend says. We're about to, uh, in this room where the, uh, the remains found. They were in that, in that corner over there. And in terms of uh, activity, anything uh, odd ever happened in this room? Really a lot of different, different strange and weird things. You know, visions and then shadows and then people saw this lady with the long hair, really tiny. So for sure it was a lady and for sure it was a younger. All right, shall we head on? Yeah, please. Right. Follow you. Follow me, yes. In this room it has something really weird to my father and my mother. They were sleeping, we had the door closed, and suddenly they hear a big room noise of an opening drawer, like tum, 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 like this. And then they hear like someone knocking on the door. So they wake up and they found the drawer open, and it goes to the door, but it was locked, so there was no one here but my father and my mother. Well, definitely I'd like to follow up on the reports. If it's all right with you, I'll stay the night here. Of course. Terrific. You're my guest. So this is the Marquis room, in one of the most famous, because there is a legend here that says that in this room, Cristina Palavicino used to have her lovers, used to make love with them, and then used to throw the man here about this trap. 
And so, Pietro, what's um, beneath this room now? I mean, is there some type of dungeon area where these people would have landed? Yes, there are the little stairs that goes down in this dungeon. And their room is called the torture room. I slept there a few times in the tower. And every night, in the middle of the night, I feel like uh, it's strange because I feel like someone, something, bit on my breast. Like. So this is the main courtyard. Here, it really happened something strange for one guy of the village. I was in the courtyard with some friends for a dinner party. A figure of a young lady appeared in the window, and we all saw her. Then she disappeared, but then suddenly reappeared over there above the arches in the other two windows. She was behind the glass, and then she started to run away. Well, gentlemen, it looks like we got a couple bedrooms up there, so yeah. you up for standing watch? Yeah, I'll take, the, uh, I'll take the one on the right side there. I think I'll take the one over to that side. This is it. We did all the trip of the castle. Thank you again for having us, and uh, time for us to get to work. Thank you. Pietro. He's had so many stories within his family, from his brother, his father, his mother, that he's invited GHI to come in and once and for all decide whether it's paranormal or there's alternative explanations. All right, Barry, what do we got? Camera number one is the Lulux camera, um, positioned in the corridor where the image of this female is said to mm -hmm. walk by the windows. Uh, camera number two is in position where the shadow is said to appear. Camera number three is in the hallway right behind the main hall, and camera number four is in the main hall. All right, uh, let's grab equipment and get to work. in this room here. They actually put their face, like, look, it's got a place for their nose. EVP session. This is Ashley and Rob in the torture chamber. What we would like to know is if there is someone here with us, were you the one being tortured? Or the one doing the torture? Now, you've got some devices in here. Ashley? Yeah? There was some kind of voice, some kind of noise. Definitely wasn't me. There was a sound coming from the chamber I was in. It's kind of hard to determine if it was a voice, but there was definitively a sound. Do you want us here in this castle? Certainly something going on around here. Ashley, come in here. Ashley, there was some kind of voice, some kind of noise. Ashley, come in here. What did you see? I didn't see anything, but I sure heard something. Ashley and I came into the torture chamber. As we started getting into an EVP session, uh, there was a sound. If you want to communicate, if you want to talk, we need to be able to hear you. But it's got to be in here. What the hell? That was like a bang over here. Mm hmm OK. I asked you to make a noise in here. You made a noise in here. So are we ready to talk now? If you want me to leave this castle, give me a sound in this room. That was a doo -doo. That was two. We kept asking for sounds, responses, and we were getting them. We checked out the area there was coming from. This isn't wood settling, it's all stone. So what I'm really hoping for is we had a couple things recording audio and video in there. I'd like to see if maybe we have some voices or even images. EVP session, Dustin and Brandy of the dungeon. Bianca, if you were here with us, we'd like to speak with you. 
Brittany and I were investigating down in the dungeon area. We were asking EVP questions of Bianca, who was a young girl, falling in love with a stable boy, but because of the difference between their class, they were not allowed to be together. And her parents walled her up, and uh, her remains were actually found down here. We just want to simply show people that you are still here, that your love was that strong that you never let go. What they did to you was wrong. Bianca, are you now together with the man that you fell in love with? And just before you questioned Brandy, there was a sound back there. Was there? Yeah, just before you spoke. It didn't sound like a voice or anything, just some, some type of sound. Can you make a noise to signify that you do understand? All right, Greedy. Wrap it up. Okay. EVP session of Rob and Barry in Dustin's room. We believe that there was a series of people who were stationed here during World War II. If any of those soldiers remain, can they come forward and give us a sign that they're here? Curious which army you were with. Did you serve with the Germans or the Italians? I just thought I'd seen a beam of light that's going down there. What did you see? Some lights over there. Over by that door. Yeah, that's what I was seeing as well, but then I thought to myself, maybe it was just my eyes. There was a very weak beam of light that passed down from the ceiling to the floor. And then I started to see other lights started to flash over toward the door, which led into my room. I'll see where this light's coming from. So Rob and I then moved to my room and conducted another EVP session. We need you to make the effort to communicate. Could you perhaps show us another light? Getting a draft coming through this door. There's nothing over here. Yeah, you can open that door. I don't feel it. Neither do I. A draft comes through the door. All the windows and doors are shut in Dustin's room, and it's incredibly hot. So to have this kind of breeze, this cool breeze coming through the door is strange. EVP session, Dustin's room, end. I chose to send Ashley down into the dungeon completely alone because I think that if the spirit of Bianca is here, it might be best able to relate to a young woman completely alone. Bianca, my name is Ashley, and it's just me in here. I just want to get to know you. You know, I heard about your story, and, and it's very sad. Holy I totally just saw a face. Bianca, my name is Ashley. I'm here to listen to your story. Holy I totally just saw a face. <laughs> I'm like shaking right now. I've never seen anything like that before. Bianca, if that was you, can you show yourself again? I began an EVP session in the dungeon, which is where this girl, Bianca, was trapped. I had my back turned towards the curtain, and I heard a noise coming from behind the curtain. Um, when I turned around, it looked like a face was peering out from behind the curtain. I walked up to the curtain to examine whatever was behind it, and there was nothing there. I set the EMF detector up. EMF stands for electromagnetic field. Many believe that if we get a strange reading where it goes up or down in an area for which there's no natural explanation, that it could be a good way to measure the paranormal activity. Bianca, my name is Ashley. I just want to get to know you. I'm here to listen to your story. There's a box right here next to me. If you could come near it, it'll make a noise and let me know that you're here. You fell in love with the stable boy. I'm guessing your parents didn't like him too much. 
Bianca, is that you? Can you do that again for me? Thank you. Are you still mad at your parents for what they did to you? Do you just want a friend? Maybe someone to talk to so you're not alone anymore? The EMF was going off um, as, it, as if it was responding to questions that I was asking. And just for the record, there's no electrical outlets or anything around. It's nothing but wooden benches and stone walls. I'll tell you what, Bianca, I'm going to leave now. EVP session. This is Joe and Ashley in uh, Barry's bedroom. Ashley and I were investigating in Barry's room where the reports are of an apparition or a shadow in that particular hallway. You know, people have said they've seen you walking around. Can you show yourself to us? Are you waiting for a loved one? Did you pass away here? Would you like us to leave you alone? All we want is a simple reply. That scared the crap out of me. Oh my God. Barry's phone went off and scared the crap out of me. I'm going to kill him. It was perfect timing. I'd asked to give us a sign. Could you give us a message? And Barry's phone kicks on and says, message received. Did you see me pull my legs up? I'm like, oh. That was ironic and uh, startling at the same time. All right, everyone. For the official investigation, that's a wrap. Get to your equipment, get to your own rooms, and uh, keep investigating. I'll see what happens. We've set up equipment in the rooms we're sleeping in tonight to capture any possible activity that might happen after the official team investigation has ended. Okay, so, EVP mic is on, camera's ready. My bedroom. If there's someone here, do you want to come forward and speak? Okay. I'm going to leave the tape running and see if anything comes to bother me during the night. EVP session and... We're about to go into analysis for Castle Malaspina. It has been a wonderful, beautiful location here in Italy, and we have a lot of experiences that we want to see if we can catch during our analysis. We want to see if there are spirits here, what they're actually trying to say. Hey guys, Ashley, I have something that backs up your personal experience when you had in the torture chamber. This is from your solo investigation. Do you just want a friend? So you're not alone anymore? The EMF detector was going crazy. If there's a way I can help you move on, that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here for. Do you remember what had that happening? Oh, of course. My whole experience down there was definitely intense. And I also saw a face. So far, Joe, has any face appeared? I haven't seen any face. OK. All right. Hey, guys. I'm going over Rob's EVP session in his room overnight. Mm -hmm. He asks the question, are you OK with me staying here? Mm -hmm. So I think he got his answer. Are you OK with me being in this room? Wow. I don't want Rob in there. Hey, Pietro. Hi. Why do you look so nervous today, Pietro? I'm not nervous. You're ready. Curious. 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 All right. Now, there's what we call personal experiences. That's like if you saw something in the corner, but by the time you get your camera up there, it's gone. Mm -hmm. At one point, myself and Ashley were in the torture chamber. We were doing an EVP session. Now, this is where we ask questions, and we go back and listen to the tape to see if possibly a response has been imprinted onto the tape, an answer. And we're getting these faint knocks. Are you happy that we're here? 
do you want us to stay? The knocks were just too faint. They just weren't on the recorder, unfortunately. Now, Ashley had a rather large personal experience also when she was down in the dungeon. She's hearing knocks where the, the bones were found. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, what do you do? She spins around with her camera. She sees a face back there. It was a statue. It wasn't the statue, because she had been in there for 35 minutes at that point. She says it looked like the face of a woman. Yeah. So all of this, you know, we can come here and we can tell you these stories, but at the end of the day, that's all they are. It's just more stories. What you brought us in here for is to actually present evidence, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, at one point, we were in the room where I was staying, the room behind where uh, the young woman was seen crossing the windows, and Barry and I were in there, and we were asking a series of questions. We had put it out there, if you can't communicate with us, if you can make a knocking sound at any time. And uh, Barry asks a uh, specific question that I'm going to play for you, and you'll be able to hear this, uh, this loud sound in response. Are you still here to defend the castle? Was this your duty? Are you... Oh. No, it's going to be outside, right? We're sitting in this room over here, this loud bang, and we both get up, we look out the window because you can see the courtyard, wanted to make sure nobody was out there, slamming a door, we check the hallway. Uh, and the other thing we're able to do is uh, using our DVR system, we have those cameras strategically placed throughout the castle, and we know for a fact that no one was in that area with us. There is something else that we're going to play for you. This was taken in the larger dungeon where the young girl was said to have been walled in alive. Ashley was doing an investigation in there by herself. Uh, something she did have with her is this EMF detector. And the theory is that the spiritual energy will interact with this, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you still mad at your parents? Are you angry with them for what they did to you? So you're able to hear the uh, response? Yeah, it's like a conversation. Yeah. That thing went off every time she asked for it to go off. At one point, Joe and Ashley were in the torture chamber. You'll hear Joe ask, can you give us a sign? Can you make a sound to show us that you're here? We actually captured this. We want you to get a listen. Please, if there's anybody in here, could you come forward and make a sound? Give us a sign that you can hear us and understand us. Yes. Yes. The voice, I mean. And they both heard that, that little bit of voice there from a room that was empty besides themselves. Now we move to my room. I'm getting ready to go to bed. I'm filming myself with my camera. I've got my voice recorder. I don't know how well I would have slept if I had heard the response that was actually picked up. Are you OK with me being in this room? No, I said. She, he said. It's an evidence, and have to take it. You didn't really want to hear this kind of stuff, huh? <laughs> I think that probably are some some real energies in this this kind of places. In our opinion, I think you got ghosts here. But at the same time, I don't think there's anything here that you should be afraid of or worried about. You heard the evidence yourself. Nothing particularly menacing. You know, you've never had one negative experience with anything here, and I don't think that's ever going to change. Hopefully, yeah. I think this place is great. It's a beautiful castle. And we want to thank you so much for inviting us in and maybe changing your mind a little bit. I'm afraid already really did. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care, Peter. Ciao. The evidence they found here in the castle, they were good evidences. Voices, sounds. Probably there are a lot of energies in this place. Even if tonight probably will be a, a strange night, I hope that the next day they'll be okay for me. Hey guys, how did the reveal go? Um, how did he take the evidence that we brought forward for? Yeah, I'd say Pietro was really impressed. We may have changed his mind a little bit, giving him some new viewpoints. But either way, he's happy that he has some answers that he can give to his family, and a uh, job well done. Awesome. Okay. All right, everyone, welcome to Genoa, Italy. 
Hey, we're headed to the Palazzo Ducal, and uh, it was originally constructed in the 13th century, and it once served as the uh, government seat in Genoa. The Palazzo Ducal houses the old prison tower. One of the more well-known prisoners was a famed violinist, Niccolo Paganini. People claim that they can still hear his music playing in the Palazzo. On top of hearing phantom music, apparently people hear disembodied voices. They hear what sounds like chains in some of the prison cells. And uh, apparently people have seen a white mist. Now our client's name is Suzanne, and she spends a lot of time there, and she's heard a lot of these stories from numerous people. She'd like some solid answers as to what's really going on. All right, this is it. Let's get in there and figure out what's going on. All right. Suzanne. Hi. Rob, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Dustin. I've been aware of the stories in Palazzo Ducale for about 25 years. It'll be very interesting to see what the GHI investigators turn up. If they come up with some evidence, people will be very interested because we're kind of fond of our ghosts. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of this location? Well, we're in Palazzo Ducale. It's the Ducal Palace where the Doges lived, and the Doge was the head of the government. The government took place here. A lot of things took place here. From 1336 to 1496, only three of the Doges actually died natural deaths. Some were poisoned, decapitated. So, you know, it was a pretty brutal time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Would you mind taking us around, kind of show us the hot spots where the stuff's been going on? Oh, I'd be happy to. All right, we'll sure. follow you. OK, thanks. Come this way. All right. So this is the cell of Jacopo Ruffini, who was a patriot when Italy was still fighting to become a unified country. And he was kept here and tortured. He was tortured because he, they wanted the names of his co-conspirators, and he wouldn't give up the names. In 1833, they said he, he committed suicide. His throat was cut, and the blood fell here, and he died. Has there been any paranormal activity in this area, in this cell? Some of the activity that has been spotted has been this kind of white figure, mm. full figure. And is that all around the tower, or does it have a specific cell that's reported, or? No, around in the tower. I think moving about. Mm -hmm. okay. We've got sounds of wailing, uh, crying, voices. I've been working here at the Palazzo for three years, and I've heard strange noises coming from the tower on many different nights. My coworkers have heard these strange noises too. It makes me feel uneasy because I don't know where they're coming from, but I know that I've heard them. All right, shall we go? Sure. Here you see it. Another cell, this whole corridor is filled with cells. There'd be 10, 12, even 15 people in a cell this size. And one of them was Niccolo Paganini, the famous violinist. And people have said that not only that has the figure of Paganini has been spotted in the tower here, but also his music has been heard. Sorry, right, we'll follow you up. Sure, here we go. So here we're in the Sala del Minor Consiglio, or the Minor Council Room, which was one of the government meeting rooms. All of the doges died in the palace because they were elected for life. Right. One of the famous incidents was uh, the doge, Simon Bocanegra. Uh, he was actually poisoned at one of the banquets here in the palace, which could have very well been in this room. There was a lot of restoration work done in this palace. These frescoes got a lot of attention, and uh, in fact, one of the restorers heard an old woman's voice say to her, oh, brava, complimenti, you know, complimenting her work. And so she looked, and there was nobody there. So now you've seen the palace. We've seen that we've got quite a bit of work to do ahead of us. Um, what we'll do now, we'll go grab the rest of the team, we'll get all our equipment out, set up, and ready to go, and uh, we'll see what we can find for you. See if we can't get you some answers. That would be great. I'm really looking forward to hearing what you find. And as we say in Italian, buon lavoro. Have a good time working. Oh, OK. <laughs> all right, thanks for everything. OK, thank, thank you. A lot of the stories that uh, we're hearing center around uh, very noteworthy figures. We have an Italian freedom fighter. 
We have a musician who is very well known, and people want you to find that particular person. But what we need to do is conduct a thorough investigation. The evidence will uh, speak for itself. All right. What I'd like to do is the people were on the tour. Um, we know where the activity is. We know specifically what we're looking for. So if we take someone with us, Barry, if you take Joe, mm -hmm. um, I know you have the equipment ready to go for the prison and the tower. Um, Dustin, if you head down to the basement where they're having the strange feelings with Ashley. Sure. And Brandy and I will head to where the restoration was occurring uh, on the ceiling, and they heard the voices and the strange goings on there. All right, let's make sure we're thorough tonight. Uh, looking for those alternative explanations. Let's get to work. Lights out. Cool. Brandy and I started our night in the council room. We were looking to make contact with the spirit of Simon Bocanegre. He was one of the doges who was poisoned within the palace. EVP session. This is Rob and Brandy. Are you Simon Boganegra? If you want to communicate with us, if you want to talk, we need to be able to hear you. Quanti Aniai. Como se chiama? Efe tuare una rumore. Is that you? Whoa. Quanti Aniai. Efe tuare una rumore. Is that you? Whoa. Pretty quickly as Brandy and I began an EVP session in the council room, uh, we heard what appeared to be a loud bang um, following one of the questions. So that's something we want to certainly immediately follow up on. Well, either something's reacting to me. Ah, there we go. That pop you could hear was coming right from that light. You see the halogen, the big lights up there? Turned them off a quick couple minutes ago before the investigation. They're still cooling down. Yeah, I see what you mean. They're everywhere, too. We looked around, and up on that second floor area where the noise came from, there was a halogen light. Uh, these lights, as they're turned off and cool down, often provide these loud bangs. It totally makes sense. EVP session. This is Robin Brandy, and... Joe, people in the tower report signs of chains clanging and people crying. There's also a white figure seen. Rafini was imprisoned in here. What was he jailed for? Uh, trying to conspire against Italy. Oh. He was uh, severely beaten on his throat with slit. Wow. Well. See if he's still here. Ruffini, are you still here? Is it true that you were murdered here in this palace? What's that? But it sounds like you came from my right. That's what I, I thought. Barry and I started to hear things right away. Um, what they were, I'm not sure, but it sounded like something moving. So we left Ruffini's cell to see where the noise was coming from. We keep moving further and further into the cells. Are you leading us down here for surprise? Is there anybody here that wants to communicate with us? Paganini, can you give us a sign of your presence? It's been reported that we will hear your music. Can you play some of that for us? Okay, we've been all the way to the bottom. Is this where you wanted us to come? There was a lot of noises in the prison a while ago. Can you do the same again? session in the cells, uh, we could hear these noises that sounded like wailing and unusual screams, um, and hopefully we caught some of that. 
opening EVP session. This is the oldest part of the whole place. I say it's over a uh, over a thousand years old. Ashley and I investigated down in the basement area. Uh, the claims down in the basement are of uh, people feeling uneasy, uh, making them feel as if they're unwanted. The place has a very violent history as far as um, beheadings and torturing and all that stuff. All right, EVP session. This is Ashley and Dustin in uh, the basement. We'd just like to make an appeal to anybody who may be here with us. People say they get bad feelings when they're down here. Can you tell us why? If you are here, why do you stay? Were you a political prisoner? We're here to listen to you if you have anything to say. That was loud. Is there anyone here with us tonight? Is there someone back here? Let's head back to our post. What is it that you're hiding from? Are you hiding down here? What's the purpose of staying down here in the cellar? If anyone is here with us, we do ask you to come forward at any time say something to where we can hear it and let us know you're here whether if it's you want us to leave or stay there is anybody here if anyone is here with us we do ask you to come forward at any time say something to where we can hear it and let us know you're here whether if it's you want us to leave or stay. There is anybody here. Oh, I, I just want to verify that. <laughs> that was loud. That was very loud. Ashley and I uh, investigated down in the basement area doing an EVP session, and a large uh, noise came from the back room. It was, uh, it was so loud. It sounds like something is falling. Like... Something's being knocked around back here, like these bottles, or like yeah. someone, like you know, someone dropped a bunch of stuff. And there's a lot of stuff back here. You're right. There we go. That's, That's our it. Culprit. That's it's it. This little, is that an ice maker? Yeah. That's definitely one of us. Turns out there's an ice machine there, and what we were hearing is the sound of the cubes as they were being made. We found ice. Oh, you would be so happy. There's no ice in Europe except right here. Oh, God, yeah. I'm glad we got that figured out. Yeah. All right, now, let's get the lights on and meet back at Central Command. I think everyone did a good job tonight. We came in looking for alternative explanations to the activity, and we were able to come up with quite a few viable ones. Um, I think now we have to go back, get some rest, put it all together, and see what we have. Okay, folks. Joe, if you wouldn't mind covering um, some of the thermal. Okay. Um, Randy, if you could help Joe with that. Absolutely. Um, so, Ashley, if you would cover the, uh, the 360 for me and the rest of the audio, and I'll cover the full spectrum shots and see what, uh, see what it's turned up. Okay? Okay. Um, I got something here, it's Barry and Joe, and um, it's strange noise, it definitely sounds like something else is there, but I'm not quite sure what to think of it, if you guys want to take a listen. The epoxy. Yes, I can hear that, um, and it's very clear. The epoxy. Yeah, but it's very quick, it happens very fast, just let me see that a second, I'll put it on the graph. Okay, what we can see is that the signal's coming in from the rear mic, coming from the, toward the rear of the cell. Um, it is coming very, very strong. Because it was so short and sharp, um, it's very hard for us to, to ascertain what it actually was. Okay, let's see what our computer's telling us. The epoxy. Mm. 
Okay, by slowing the pitch down, we can see there is no voice in there. And I really do think from what I'm seeing here, this is filtering in from the city. It is just simply noise. Let's uh, push ahead and see what else is there. Okay. Hey guys, um, I got something on the 360 here and it's with Barry and Joe and you guys were up in the tower and it's a very interesting noise. It actually sounds like wailing of some sort. Oh. I hear that. It sounds like someone moaning. Suzanne, hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. How you doing? Fine, how are you? Very well, thanks. So have you got some results for me? I think so. So what we look to do is come in, first of all, and look for alternative explanations for activity or other ways that could have happened that would be non-paranormal. This room specifically, you tell us a story about the woman who was uh, working in this room um, up on one of the frescoes. Uh, and heard somebody say, yeah, good job, or something like that. So I went out to the balcony, mm -hmm. um, and I had uh, our other investigator, um, Ashley, who was with me, uh, just kind of poke a head in through the door uh, and whisper slightly. I could hear her plain as day, uh, but then by the time I looked down, she had ducked back out the door. And of course, this is designed for um, these meetings and these political hearings, so the acoustics are fantastic. Um, so just trying to find another reason for that. We want to really focus as well on sound in here. Barry and Joe were in the tower, and uh, they spent time in the, in the prison cells, uh, as well as uh, ascending through the tower itself, um, looking to get sounds uh, of what you told us, the moaning sounds, the chains. Mm -hmm. We actually were able to capture the sounds of the wailing, so we want to play that for you now. After going through these sounds, we were able to find out that we had birds outside that did have this kind of wailing sound to them. Mm -hmm. But does the question remain, if people are wandering through here and they kind of have this idea that this is the haunted place, when they hear mm -hmm. sounds like that saying, oh, it's that ghost again. Or they feel like uh, they, they've heard the story, so they're ready to imagine something. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Can we account for all the paranormal reports here? No. But what we do know is we were able to hopefully come up with some alternative explanations for some of the activity. And after going through all of the equipment that we used throughout the night, there was not a single sign of any paranormal activity. Could the paranormal phenomena kind of be subdued when you come in to investigate? Absolutely. Is this a question of the spirits just kind of hanging back? Possibly, but I don't think so. Mm -hmm. But it's just one of those things that despite all the incredible legends, um, there was no signs of uh, anything paranormal for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From our investigation, mm -hmm. it would point to the, this location being not haunted. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming and, and giving us this report. Well, you're very welcome. Grazie. Yeah. <laughs> That's Shall we go? OK. Right. Of course, I'm a little disappointed to not have any activity, but I think there will be some people who will be relieved to hear that Palazzo Ducale is not haunted. But even more than that, the, um, the greater, the wider public of Genoa that has heard the legends and maybe even spoken to somebody who had an experience here, I think they'll hold on to that anyway. Well, I think that went well. Suzanne knew we were going to come in, be skeptical, and look for alternatives behind the, the claims of activity. And uh, she seemed OK with it and happy with the results. Can't ask for more than that. It's nice to be back in Italy, fine food, good times, good investigations. That's it, brother. I hear you.